Okay, we got a one of the contestants. You guys can help us out. Get a cat out of the, uh, off the pole. Poor cat, come on. He's got the cat. Con Edison. Con Edison, baby. <laughs> So much. All right, we got him. What is he gray, right? He's gray. All right. Hey, baby. Hey, you see? Yay! Welcome to I'm a Fan. My name is Kim Eberly and I'm here with Chris Mancuso. I selected him today because he inspires me so much with his work, his dedication to saving homeless animals and actually finding a home for them. Thank you so much, Chris, and welcome. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So we played a video before we started and I want you to tell me what's going on there. Okay. okay. So, um... As uh, you, you know, I'm the director of Staten Island Hope Animal Rescue, and we received a message on our Facebook page. It was probably about 10 o'clock, 10.30 at night, and this woman had said that there was a cat stuck on top of a pole for like 12 hours. Oh, my um, God. So, I, I mean, I felt really bad at that point. Um, you know, no cat should, should, no animal should be, you know, stuck in a position like that. So I moved into action. I called up one of my volunteers. I said... Hey, can you get a 30-foot ladder? And we both, we, we made our attempts to try to get a ladder and go save the cat. Unfortunately, neither one of us had access to a 30-foot ladder at 11 o'clock at night. But we yeah. drove down there anyway to assess the situation and uh, see, see what was up. Uh, when we got there, sure enough, the little kitty was up on top of the 30-foot pole. My and uh, my friend Mike, who came with me, actually works for Con Edison. So he said, let me see what I can do. Calls up Con Edison, the dispatch sends out, uh, a guy, you know, one of the workers in a cherry picker, and the guy went up, got the cat, brought it down. I took it home, got it to the vet, checked out, tested, vaccinated, fixed, and fostered it, and got her home. I think it's amazing that she stood in that one small space yeah, for was... 12 hours. I mean, cats can do that? Absolutely. I mean, wow. she was terrified. There, there yeah. was really... Cats are very adapted climbing up. Uh, you know, either something scared her up there, or maybe she chased a squirrel. Squirrels are a lot better at getting down yeah. than cats are. And, you know, maybe she could have got down, but cats will stay up on poles and trees for days if they're afraid. And this cat was very afraid, but she was very actually very friendly. It's pretty amazing. So, uh, I didn't, you you don't strike me as, like, a cat person. <laughs> and... I mean, how did you just start with all of this? Well, I mean, growing up, I always I always liked animals. I was more of a dog person. We had dogs growing up. Uh, I met my wife. My wife was a cat person. And um, wait, how many years ago? How many years ago I met my wife? We've well, been, yeah, and you. We've been together uh, like seventeen years, I think. Okay, wow. I'm really making myself old, but you know. <laughs> um, anyway, we got our first cat, which was her grandmother's cat. Um, in like 2006, I want to say, yeah, the cat, her name was Sonny Girl, she was nine years old uh, at the time. Uh, my wife's grandmother was ill, so she sure will take in the cat. And like, I had no particular affection for cats because I really didn't grow up around them and they struck me as rather aloof. So I figured the cat would just come in the house, it would hide or do its own thing, I'll do my own thing. 
our paths don't have to cross. Well, I feel be happy, which is very important. You know, no big deal. But after a couple of weeks, this little tuxedo cat started coming, sitting next to me, want me to pet her, you know, making me rub her head. And then she won <laughs> me over in a couple of weeks. Uh, so from that point on, uh, you know, I, I, I learned that cats are just as affectionate as dogs are. Mm -hmm. So how did you get involved in the rescue group then? Well, again, it's because of because of Sunny Girl mainly. Um, I had saved a second cat. Well, I'd say it was actually a, a save. Uh, I was on a movie set. We were filming a zombie movie, an independent zombie film. And one of the actresses found this little black kitten. And, you know, every, everybody was kind of really excited and petting it. And we felt bad. The kitten was just out in, on Van Duzer Street, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, a lot of traffic, high traffic area, and somebody was like, oh, someone's got to take him home. I said, I'm not taking this cat home. <laughs> I have a cat. I want another cat. Well, sure enough, I held a little kitten. He jumped up on my shoulder, oh. sat there like a parrot, and started rubbing against my face. He must have just saw sort of, like sucker written on my forehead because I uh, wound up taking him home. And that was my first save. Uh, his name was, like I said, Van Duzer. We oh. named him Van Duzer because he was found on Van Duzer Street. Cool. And, uh... So how I got involved with rescue, this is now 2013, uh, Sunny Girl, the first cat we got, yeah. we had, wound up having mouth cancer, Aww. and we had to put her down. Um, it was very upsetting, you know, to lose a pet, it's like losing a member of the family. But uh, there was about, it was about 10 months later, and uh, my wife starts telling me, see, she's uh, seeing like shadows out of the corner of her eye, like a cat. Now, at this point, we had Van Duzer, who, you know, I found a couple of years back. And we also had two, like, 10-month-old kittens. So, of course, you're seeing cats everywhere. I have three cats. I'm one of those cat guys now with three cats. <laughs> so, I kind of just brushed it off. And uh, anybody who knows me knows I've actually been involved in the paranormal since 2002. But I've always been very skeptical. Uh, anyway, one night, uh, I'm finishing up work. I uh, open my, the door to my office. And a cat comes in, black cat. I, you know, I know the walk, the, the saunter, the tail kind of sticking up in the air, curled at the end. I'm thinking of this Van Duzer. I said, come on, boy, you can't stay in here. I look wow. down, there's no cat there. Well, this way, I no cat anywhere. And out of my office, I could see under my couch. I look out the office, there's Van Duzer sitting on the couch. He does one of these. He's like, puts his head back down. And the kittens, at that point, were... Helping my wife fold laundry. So what did I just see? You know? I came to the realization that, yes, I had seen uh, the spirit of Sunny Girl. I saw a ghost cat to come back to, you know, hey, just maybe let me know she's still there and still a place that she enjoys coming to visit. And uh, it was after that, you know, I spoke to a guy who's like a mentor to me, John Zaffis. Uh, he's been in the paranormal field for like 40 years. And we had this big, long discussion. And, uh, you know, like I said, I came to that realization, wow, you know, animals do have spirits. Where I, just a couple of years before, accepted the fact that people do. But now, animals? Really? So that kind of hit me like a brick. I started thinking about all of the dogs and all of the cats in the New York City shelter system mm -hmm. that wind up getting euthanized on basically a daily basis. Yeah. And they die without knowing any kind of love, any kind of compassion. So I said, well, you know, maybe I can... Do something about that. And I, I looked up, I googled uh, Staten Island Animal Rescue. Staten Island Hope, the first one to come up. I reached out to the director said, hey, I'm a videographer. You know, I'd like to, you know, make some videos, help yeah. out your cause. And I did. And the more I, you know, videotaped and worked with the director a little bit, I started seeing more and more of a need right. that I began to fill. And here we are now, it's like three years later, and all of a sudden I'm the director. I don't know how That's that awesome. Happened. <laughs> yeah. but, but a lot of things came out of that, too. And that's another reason why you inspire me so much, because you uh, recently had a book published. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, uh, what's cool about the book, it's called uh, Tales from the Other Side, uh, Pets and the Paranormal. Uh, and it brings together three of my, <laughs> three of my passions. Uh, it brings together animal rescue, yes, writing, right, and the paranormal. Okay. So it's a it's like an anthology. Uh, Jessica Burke and Anthony Burge from Myth Inc. Myth Inc. Books uh, helped me put it together and edit it and everything. And we have yeah. an anthology of people's stories. How many writers contributed? 
I don't know exactly. I know there's like there has I think thirty something stories, and yeah, you know, a couple of maybe one or two people have like two stories in there, but it's got to be like thirty writers. I would say thirty. Well, not writers. I don't want to call them writers. Contributors. Contributors, because not everybody is an author. Not everyone who submitted to the book is a paranormal investigator. These are just pet owners that the had an stories. experience yeah. with an animal, whether it be a dog, a cat, or whatever that crossed over the other side to kind of let them know it's there. It's amazing. And it's 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 I, I, it's an uplifting book. You know what I mean? There's sure the element of sadness of hey, you know the pet had died, had passed on. Yeah. But then hey, you know there's more there's more to it than so just So how life. does somebody get that book? The, oh well, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> you can order the book uh, on the website uh, well, for Mythinks, which uh, is yeah. Mythink Books. Yeah. www.mythinkbooks.com. Okay. And then can they go to Staten Island Hope and get it? Or they, their their website? They, you can go to Staten Island Hope, which is www.statenislandhoperescue.org. Okay, and they could just Facebook you and ask you for Sure, you can right? find me on Facebook. I'm a pretty available guy. Uh, yeah. Chris Macy, so? so? I, I want to talk about the, the two cats that I actually adopted from you. Yes. And tell me where they were before I adopted them, because I, I was just beside myself. Well... Uh, you adopted a kitten named Sugar. Yes. That was his name. Uh, we got him and his sister Pepper. Uh, they were both at New York City Animal Control. Ready to on death row, right? They were on death row. That's horrible. Uh, they were only, when I got them, they were, I think, about five weeks old. And yeah. they were very sick. As you know, Sugar, or you call him Captain Jack is his well, name now. Well, his name's Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> well, he, he basically... Lost vision in an right. eye because of it, right. and Pepper was also affected by her. You know, they got they came out of the shelter really sick. Yeah, and a lot of animals don't get homes because they have defects of some sort. Like Captain Jack was blind in one eye, so he would have a, a more difficult time yes. getting adopted. Yeah. But I saw him right away, and I thought, oh, how cute. But the other one, Garfield, he was also on death row, yes. and he had um, some virus or bacteria or something? Well, initially, he had tested positive for FELV, which is feline leukemia virus. Yeah. So uh, they so dispose of animals right away. Oh, usually, that, yeah. Right? Usually, I mean, those are really hard to place. That's, that's yeah. actually a contagious uh, disease. But we pulled them. We try to place those hard-to-place animals sometimes. Yeah. And we got, uh, we got Garfield retested, and he tested negative. Yeah, there you go. So, so, I mean, they could have euthanized them for no good reason at all. Yeah, and that's the other thing. You do um, take in uh, cats that have special needs. You're one of the few uh, rescue groups that do that. And, I I mean, I've seen so many successes with that. That's another reason well, why... Well, that, that's because I want to keep it half of them. Yeah, well, <laughs> we, we won't... We won't go there, but yes, I understand. That's why I couldn't do what you do. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's difficult. That's that's probably one of the most one of the most difficult aspects of animal rescue, I think, for a lot of people is that fostering. Yeah. Because you foster a cat, you get or a dog, and you give it a temporary home, and eventually you're gonna fall in love with this animal. Yeah. And then you have to give it up. Yeah. You know. So anyway, um, if you are looking to adopt a kitty cat. Definitely, Staten Island Hope is the place to go. Um, I want to thank you for sharing your stories with us, and I'm definitely a fan. Thank so uh, what we're doing on this show is we're asking you to pay it forward and to select someone who you're a fan of to come on the show. I have to think about that. All right, I think, uh, I think I'll invite uh, Lance J. Rea from Lake Films on. And, uh, oh, it's so awesome. I'm a fan of him and uh, a lot of his films. Awesome. All right, so the next time, uh, Chris will be having Lance on the show. Thanks for having me. All right, thank you.